what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we have a uh, quite interesting video this time uh why did boogeyman eat jillian hall's mold wwe storylines explained first of all i didn't even know this was a storyline anything involving the boogeyman back in the day always kind of creeped me out especially when they introduced him in wwe i was quite disturbed by what he was doing um but I didn't even know this was a thing. So um, I'm already quite disturbed. But we're going to check this out. Someone sent this in uh, for me to check out. So uh, yeah, man. Y'all, uh, we get to sit here and be grossed out together. You know, I'm not about to be the only one grossed out by this. So uh, we're going to get right into this weird storyline. Let's get right into one this one, man. One of the most disgusting images ever seen in WWE was the mole on Jillian Hall's face. Take a look at this. How did Jillian get this mole and how did she have it removed? First, we have to start at the beginning. At the 2005 Great American Bash pay-per-view, Nitro and Jody Mercury, collectively known as Eminem, defended their WWE Tag Team Championship against Road Warrior Animal and Heidenreich. Nitro and Mercury lost the match and were no longer champions. Their manager, Melina, thought the loss was bad publicity for the tag team, but she had a solution. On the following episode of SmackDown, Melina revealed she hired a fixer to help improve Eminem's image, but there was a catch. <laughs> Is she a girl? Well, she is, but she isn't. She's not a girl? Before Melina could explain, the fixer came in, a woman named Jillian Hall. Everything seemed normal about Jillian until... Melina, we are going to have so much fun together. Later that night, Jillian accompanied Melina for a match against Tori Wilson. The commentators continuously drew attention to Jillian's growth and speculated how she got it. Melina ended up winning her match, and we learned more about Jillian's mole the next week. It's also important- This was a real storyline. I didn't even know this was a thing. <laughs> I'm so grossed out, bro. I know it's obviously not real, but- Who? Who came? Sounds like a Vince thing. Definitely sounds like a Vince idea. Or somebody, one of the writers went to Vince and Vince loved it. What the hell? Important to note that a few weeks before this, videos started playing on SmackDown, hyping the debut of someone called The Boogeyman. Mm. I'm The Boogeyman, and I'm coming to get you. During a backstage segment the next week, Jillian Hall called her growth a blemish, which she had for her entire life, implying she was born with that. I have a blemish on my face, yet I still carry myself with dignity, which is more than I could say for you people. Later that night, Jillian, as well as Melina, accompanied Eminem to their tag team match against Booker T and Chris Benoit. Joey and Johnny won their match, primarily thanks to interference from Melina. As you'd find out the next week, it was a good thing Jillian didn't do much. Two weeks after Jillian Hall's debut, Joey Mercury was in a one-on-one -on -one match against Booker T. Jillian, Nitro, and Melina were ringside, but Jillian's attempt to distract the referee failed, and both she and Johnny Nitro were ejected. <laughs> Melina was still ringside and did help Joey Mercury win the match, but not without suffering the wrath of Booker wife Charmel. Afterward, Jillian Hall issued a challenge. Mercury and Melina versus Booker T and Charmel in a mixed tag team match. Booker and Charmel accepted and the match happened one week later. During the mixed tag team match, Jillian proved her worth when she tripped Charmel and allowed Melina to get the pin. Despite her blemish, Jillian Hall had proved herself to be a valuable asset to Eminem as the team had not lost a single match since she came on as their fixer. Jillian even got the team on the cover of the SmackDown magazine. With all this momentum, Eminem started looking to reclaim the tag team championship. On the August 25th, chosen five episode of SmackDown, Johnny- Anger I just want to put in the context, it's crazy how the tag team division in SmackDown was somewhat important. Like they, they gave it somewhat some type of importance, at least on the SmackDown side of things. Well, just tag teams in general back then in WWE. Like it, it was cool to see, see, you know, people actually trying to, you know, actually being some viable teams, teams that are not just randomly put together all the time, but teams that are built on tag team wrestling and trying to get the gold. I, I did, <laughs> Uh, well, I do appreciate seeing that. I, you know, I wish we would see that a little bit more uh, on WWE uh, television. Now, I think the problem now is just there's not enough tag teams um, for them to have split, uh, split branded belts. At least not right now, and they don't really put too too much focus on it like they should. Uh, at least recently. 
one half of the tag team champions, Heidenreich. Things didn't work out quite as planned, as the referee caught Joey Mercury hitting Heidenreich with a steel <laughs> chair. The tag team champions were left laid out, and a message had been sent. The following week, Joey Mercury took a stab at Heidenreich in a singles match. Jillian Hall was noticeably absent, but that would be explained soon. Heidenreich ended up getting the win, and a post-match brawl nearly turned ugly, as Molina was set up for the doomsday. Oh. Jillian County prevented that from happening, and laid out the tag team champions once again. Backstage, it was shown that Jillian had been talking with a network representative named Paul Cannon. This led to Eminem getting a tag team title match the next week on SmackDown. Also, this was pretty funny. What is these earrings? That's <laughs> so Eminem stupid. The show with their tag team championship match against Heidenreich and Road Warrior Animal, like the week before. The one thing I can say about this booking situation is they brought in somebody for a heel tag team even though i don't think they really needed to but to kind of help them get their momentum back and the weeks leading up her being there is quote unquote help them win matches in heel like fashion and ultimately be able to go back and challenge for the uh tag team championships once again which is crazy to say you don't really see too many storylines where someone gets involved on a team and then they just their momentum skyrockets that's how it's usually supposed to be booked like their momentum skyrockets because of this person being added to the team or whatnot so it, it, i can give some appreciation for the storyline that they were telling initially before it gets even more gross <laughs> Hall was at ringside with Molina, Mercury, and Nitro, which turned out to be a mistake. The referee got knocked down. To the <laughs> of match, course. But Molina tried to take advantage of the opportunity. The plan backfired, and Eminem lost the match and their chance to become tag team champions again. Following this, Jillian Hall would quietly leave Eminem and partner with someone else. A week after Eminem lost their tag team championship match, JBL also lost a match against Rey Mysterio. Embarrassed that he had lost to a wrestler half his size, JBL met with Jillian Hall and asked her to help him. Jillian agreed. Uh... And to work. Over the next few weeks, Jillian would have JBL say and do a variety of things to improve his image. It may not have changed fans' opinion of JBL, but the wrestling god got his confidence back. This even led to him defeating Rey Mysterio in a rematch at the No Damn. interview. At the same time that this was all going on, a new wrestler would make his debut, the Boogeyman. Damn. <laughs> Just a after months creepy promo, individual the man had officially debuted it was explained that the promo videos were actually advertisements for another tv show on the same network as smackdown something happened on set though and the show got canceled since the network had a contract with the boogeyman they decided to have him on smackdown oh here in random places and terrorize the smackdown roster Bro. including jbl <laughs> <laughs> this thing is creepy, bro. I'm and I'm coming to get you. After their first encounter, Boogeyman, JBL, and Jillian Hall would all continue to do their own thing, but their paths would cross again about a month later. On the final SmackDown of 2005, JBL, with Jillian Hall by his side, took on Matt Hardy, which was a rematch from Armageddon five days earlier. Jeez. During the match, Boogeyman came out, and JBL's focus completely shifted to the worm eating. And once again, what they did with her character is like someone that helps people that are losing most it seems like relative like the heels that are losing to gain their confidence i can appreciate like a manager role like that i can appreciate that um so it was cool that they had that for her and they were prominently using her it's just she had a grotesque <laughs> mole on the side of her face. So monster. As Boogie got closer, JBL got out of the ring <laughs> and used Jillian Hall as a human shield oh. and a handful of worms. Unfortunately for Jillian, things would get much worse for her. <laughs> on the first SmackDown 2006, JBL, upset about his count out defeat to Matt Hardy, challenged the Hardy boy to a Falls Count Anywhere match. With assistance from Jillian Hall, JBL managed to avenge his loss and defeat Matt Hardy. Unfortunately, oh. this music started playing afterward. <laughs> Boogie chased after JBL and Jillian and grabbed a hold of Paul and stuffed worms down her skirt. While this is all bad for poor Jillian, Boogeyman still wasn't done. A week later, JBL and Jillian Hall appeared on Roddy Piper's Piper's Pet. During the segment, Roddy Piper asked about Jillian Hall's growth. Piper would then introduce the Boogeyman, and he crawled into the ring. Like before, JBL chucked Jillian Hall at Boogeyman no. and ran JBL up. is, he's a piece of garbage, dog. <laughs> Bro, imagine you just chucking a woman at the ops and you run. <laughs> 
Paul froze in fear as Boogeyman began studying the grove. Boogie sniffed and licked Jillian's blemish before removing it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least Jillian didn't have to worry about people staring at her blemish anymore. Now, to hear the story of the imposter cane and why May 19th was so important. That was quite disturbing. <laughs> That's... I don't even want to go back. It's the, the thought of that just makes me gag. Oh, uh, yeah. WWE back in the day. Quite interesting. We had a woman that was a manager that was uh, ultimately attacked multiple times by this creep walking around with an alarm clock, smashing it on the top of his head while eating worms. She was subjected to worms being poured down her skirt and chased. And even one of her clients kept throwing her right at this said individual only for once again boogeyman comes out there and uh decides to eat the grotesque mass on her face that's wwe back in the day comment down below let me know did that disgust you as much as it disgusted me or were you guys okay with that were you guys just uh you know, I've seen this before, so it didn't bother you. Me, I've never seen this storyline. Glad I didn't <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, I've seen it now. It's quite disgusted. Let me know if I'm the only one that's disgusted here. But uh, I appreciate all the love and support. Road to uh, 150K. I'm still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.